Okay. When you got your lights on, you got your arm guard on, there's a few things that you, you may want to have. Rattling bag, that's to attract the deer. I prefer having one of those, the earth self one that you grind on your knee. I don't really like to see guys walking around with antlers. Antlers are made to poke holes in things. They can poke a hole right through your lungs just as easy as not. I don't know why people think they got to have them. There's no sequence to them. I don't think they have ever actually watched deer battle. Those deer just grind. They're not banging and doing all that. So this right here, if you got the right day, will get it, and it's a whole lot safer than having pointed objects coming around your neck at the nighttime. But uh, they watch too much TV, I guess, in my opinion. Okay, Tom is definitely going to go in a tree stand. He can battle, and he can bulk a lot. Now, this is a little over the top, but this is personalizing your hunt. You know, most people got that little black tube. This deer is an actual, this is an actual grunt tube. This is the stuff that gets out of the deer. Shot that deer two years ago. I said, tomorrow night I'll bring some of them and show you how you do that. Just put them, stick a hickory stick in the middle of it, and capsulize it in salt. More you can make your hunt personalized out of using the things that you've killed, the more neater it is. That's actually the windpipe of the sauce that gets out of a deer. And you can just you dry it out, you put it on there. And you know, that, was, that deer was walking around. That's not a piece of plastic made in China. That was made in Clark County. <laughs> just a little more, you know, put a little more of you into the hunt. It doesn't all have to come off the shelf. You know, it, you, you, be a good Indian, you know, never throw nothing away. But uh, yeah, you just dry that out, you put it on there, you got a real work to it. Uh, another thing you should have around your neck when you go out there, one of the most crucial things you should have on your neck, when you're up on a tree stand, have a nice whistle. Because if you do fall out of your tree stand, you may not be able to reach out with where you're at. Hopefully you don't fall out of it. But that's the number one accident right now, the people falling out of the tree stand, and that should not happen. That's somebody was not responsible. But if you do fall out, at least you got a signal that somebody can hear. The other thing you want to have is, is a compass, a good compass. I know a lot of people have GPSs, I have GPSs. But what I use this compass for is when I shoot that deer, before. Now, he runs off and he ran by that tree and I get that compass out right around that tree and I take a bearing on it right there. Because when you get down on the ground, it's all going to change. At least I can go back to that. And I found arrow space. I shoot an arrow in that direction, put that on there, okay, walk that direction right on the beat. But do it when, you're, when you shoot the deer and you get a fixed object, take that bearing right there with that compass. Keep them around your neck, keep them down in, inside your vest. Another thing, having binoculars. These are small binoculars, but usually if you're in Iowa, you don't need a large pair unless that's your preference. Bigger the pair, sometimes they're more comfortable. Why should you have binoculars? Uh, Adam. Huh? Yeah, if you're a trophy hunter, you can judge it up whether you want to shoot it or not. If you're not a trophy hunter, or you can catch them, you can see them first before they see you or whatnot. I'm coming in. Yeah. Urban night, window peeking. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, you know, yeah, especially on there, you can see right in somebody's bathroom there. You know, or bedroom. Number 11 coming up. <laughs> Anyhow, the nice thing about binoculars, if you shoot a deer and you get a lesser desired shot, and he's standing out there, you get those binoculars up and that's going to tell you where that deer's bleeding and you can see maybe the entrance or the exit all. And that's going to give you some information to where you get down and leave and we'll talk about that tomorrow night. But binoculars are a must. Now if you're out west, if you don't have binoculars, high quality ones, you're just wasting your time. If you're going to spot and stop, you need binoculars. But keep them small enough for the application and don't and I see this every year, 
when you got this stuff around your neck, the bad things can happen. You can, you can choke yourself. But the worst part about it is, that unless you got them tethered off or stuffed down in there, if you have to make an unorthodox shot, these things are going to hang out. You're probably going to whack your bowstring. I've done it before. On those drunk calls, I don't know how many people hit their drunk calls because they got it around their neck. And I'll still watch video after video of young kids that I know I taught went to class, and they still got them hanging around their neck, exposed out there. And someday they're going to come in with a story that a bowstring hit that. And it's going to yank it off and knock your eye out when it does it. But try to keep them concealed as much as you can. And that way if you're walking through the brush too, it doesn't grab you by the neck and somebody grabs you from behind. But actually it was your own fault because your binocular strap grabbed you. But uh, that whistle is really important because nothing sounds like that whistle in the woods. But if you're going, help, 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 you know, that sounds like, move, move, move. But if that guy says, I heard a train whistle, there ain't no train track down there at the bottom. He might come looking for you. But the uh, main safety deal is that hunter vest, when you're going to be in a tree stand, have a full body harness. Uh, I like to have a vest. I'm just too poor. When I use these harnesses, I've used them because like, my clothes go up and down. I put goose down, so I want something that expands instead of having that same. If I buy one vest, then the chance are it's going to be a little bit. Those vests are excellent, 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 excellent. I don't go, don't leave home without some kind of restraint. Uh, and a full body harness or the vest, that's the only way to go. And you owe it to your, your, yourself, you owe it to your family, and you owe it to everybody in this room. Because we don't need to be, you know, you could lose uh, the opportunity of hunting out of a tree stand if the accident level kept climbing. They'd say, okay, no more, no more tree stand hunt. And how would they enforce it? Be pretty easy. They catch you with a harness or something, they'll write you a ticket because you've got the intent to have that on your body. So let's try not to get that far along. But the people, you know, falling out of trees and, and Blue Cross Blue Shield has to pay for a, an accident like they might cancel your insurance if you're a bow hunter. You never know where that'll go. So try to be a responsible hunter, you know, and, and always strap yourself in. Now, Tom has two straps. Anybody know why he has two straps on here? He has two, two safety harnesses. Why doesn't he have two safety harnesses? One for climbing up a tree. Yes. So the both for climbing up a tree. But he has, the reason he has two, <clears throat> okay, when he, if he's going to go up that tree, if he comes to a limb in a tree, and he's got his harness on, if he's got to go around the limb, he's got to take that harness off. Say the limb's here? No, he don't. He just takes his other harness, puts that above the limb, he goes up above the limb now, strap yourself on to the same rigging and unho unhooks the bottom one. You take the bottom one off, now that one comes off, now this is the, the limb's here. This got him up to that limb. Now this is above the limb that he's got to go around. Follow me? That way he's never untethered from the tree. And when you have one of these, you should always have one of these when you're putting on a tree stand. Because that way it gives you the lineman effect, you can lean back, so you don't have to worry about falling. And uh, just make sure you have one of those on it. Because there, without them, you're really, you're asking for trouble. But we're going to go have an article or a film tomorrow night over that. But two straps are a must to, to, to hunt. That way you can maneuver around limbs that are out in the way. Another critical thing you should have, and you should put your game officer's phone number in there, is a cell phone. The first time up in Springbrook, Iowa in 1994, first bow hunter education class I, I took to become a, an instructor, I got left clear out of the room. Because why would you take a cell phone? That's how far we came in 16 years, or 17 years. Uh, I had a brick phone. I don't know if you guys know what those look like. They look like a you know, brick. And I said, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting there thing, and I said, well, I think you ought to have a cell phone. A cell phone? You and the last thing you want in the woods is a cell phone. That was the first thing you want in the woods. But things changed, and I'll never forget 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think I was, uh, uh, I got completely left out of that classroom. Okay. There's another little thing going along for you beginners. If you want to use scent, this is a little scent trap. Herb smells in here, and they work pretty good. But, uh, you, uh, it's on a little tether. Anyhow, it saves scent because you can pour it in here, pour it in the top, and then it keeps it in there. And then when you want to make a drag line, now there's two cents. What's the two cents? What two cents should you use as a bow hunter? Cover and a trapping. Yeah. A cover and a tracking? An attractive. A what? An attractive. An, an attractive. Now, <coughs> what's the difference, Rich, between a cover and an attractive? A cover, you're trying to mask a human body or, or something like that. An attractive, you're trying to draw them in with like a buckler or goes in. Yeah, anybody, uh, you new guys, have you used scents before? How'd you find they work? Pretty good. Okay, it's like what Rich said. This little wafer right here, this could be a cover scent. And what you use that for, they make several cover scents. Uh, you could use, some guys used to use turpentine. There's an acorn scent. There's a, uh, this scent sort of outdated. I used to use this a lot. It was a cover scent. This was, this was really, I don't know if you guys, yeah, that's, that smells pretty good. That smelled like vanilla. And then this this hair one smelled like uh, acorn scent. I hope I didn't skunk and spray it on you. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, you got to have two scents. One to attract the deer. Now, when you when you drag this drag trail, where are you going to leave it at? You know, you, you, you're walking from your truck in, and you get to your tree stand, you want to put this over where you think the deer where you're going to have the ambush spot at. And, and you want to leave it on the ground like this? Who said no? <laughs> okay, Adam, how do you want to leave it? You want to hang it in the tree, you know, about head height or something for a deer so the scent, like the wind blowing and stuff, the scent actually gets around. You, you do guys get that? <clears throat> okay, you, you want to get that up so the wind currents can carry it for you. If it's down here, if you've got a hot buck, you can come sniffing it. But here you're getting the most coverage, you get 360 degree coverage out of that, that way, if it's up off the air curve, can carry it. But you want to put it over where you want to shoot the deer. You don't want to put it up in the stand here because the deer come along and look, you know. But these, these are pretty nice, they're e economical, it, you know, and, and you can, or you can put it on a rag, it doesn't make any difference. But there are two different scents, an attractant and a cover. Keep that in mind when you go to the field. Especially when you guys, you want to set it up, you want to set your shot up, these, these are dynamite. I set Deb's first deer up. Boy, she thought I was the world's greatest hunter. I drug a thing down. I said, the deer's going to come right here. And, you know, you know, wishful thinking. I put the thing there. I asked her what the deer did. And she said, well, it did, you know, it did exactly what you said. I said, it did? <laughs> wow, how many times does that work? I put that thing down. I hung on a stand about 15 yards away. The deer come up, smell it, walk over there, and she shot it. It was a game track. And she found her own deer with the game crash. That's another thing, you know, that was pretty cool about that. Okay, when you got that on there, two steps. That's, uh, you should have two steps on it. Okay, you got the cell phone, you got the double strength. This little gadget right here, this little pocket, is to hold your bow. So, you know, you get tired and the deer's coming, you can rest it in your knee and you're, you know, you got your your arrow on and you're ready, you know, because some of these new bows are pretty heavy. It's nice to have one of those little pockets or uh, something sewed on your pants. One of the nice things that you better have, if you do get upside down, you want to have a real sharp knife. So if you have to, you can cut your tether and get it off, you know, get off the tree with it. So you want to have access to a knife, not just in your fanny pack. Have it on there where you can either in your pocket or somewhere where you can get it readily. Any questions so far on any of this equipment? Now a few. This stuff is what you need. To, if you fall on the ground, this is going to be your holiday in for the night, what you bring into the woods, your clothing. Your clothing's almost become gear. I mean, you can hunt harder. Uh, I can tell 